In this episode, Broadcom makes Linux Wi-Fi easier, Linux Myths debunked, and will Chrome OS be dead on arrival? <laughs> Quicksurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 11, Episode 8. From PC World, there's a story here. Linux Wi-Fi gets easier with a new Broadcom driver. This is pretty neat. Wireless chipmaker Broadcom on Thursday announced good news for Linux, Linux users in the form of a fully open wireless driver that's compatible with the operating system. Wireless networking has long been a sticking point for Linux users. Boy, tell me about it. Uh, with netbooks and laptops, including Broadcom chipsets, which have traditionally used proprietary drivers that don't work with Linux. Other makers of Wi-Fi chipsets, Atheros and Intel, for instance, have been supporting Linux natively for some time already. So uh, this is nothing but good news. Linux has been one of those weird scenarios where... Sometimes uh, wireless works fantastic in Linux, and sometimes it doesn't. And and usually, because the reason why because it doesn't is because uh, there's a Broadcom chipset or there's some other just unsupported chipset. In the early days of wireless and Linux, wireless was wireless support was horrible on Linux. But you know, with the latest Ubuntu 10.04. Um, you know, it, it actually, it, it's pretty good. I recently installed um, Ubuntu 10.04 on uh, my brother-in-law's notebook because it was an older computer and he, he didn't want to load Windows 7 on it and didn't have Windows XP. And so I said, well, you know what, let's just, you know, as an experiment, just to see if this will even work for you, let's uh, download the ISO for uh, uh, Ubuntu and put it on there and... Um, you know, we loaded it up. The Wi-Fi built into the notebook um, was broken, and he had this little USB Wi-Fi dongle that he plugged in that he had been using before. And um, I was a little skeptical about whether or not it would work, but lo and behold, plug the thing in. Next thing I know, it's bloop, little you know thing pops up and says, "Hey, you've got wireless access points available. Which one do you want to connect to?" You know, I mean, it was like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I was expecting to have to do a lot more with it than that, but uh, it worked right out of the box. Every all of his hardware, software, everything that was working before worked with without even so much as an issue. I mean, Linux has really come a long ways um, from the earlier days. But uh, this is this is good news for broad, getting back to the whole Broadcom thing. This is good news for Linux users because now, you know, it uh, it it means that. Uh, here in the next six months or less, uh, there's going to be some really fantastic Linux wireless support, especially when it comes to Broadcom chips. So that'll be nice. Let's talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend. But the only one I trust and, re and rely on is GoToAssist Express, the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why GoToAssist Express? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with a tool that's slow or unreliable, will appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating. It's so fast you'll be on the other computer troubleshooting or giving a tutorial or doing whatever it is you need to do in seconds. And it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash techpodcast. From the register, uh, Novell Punt's cloud control tool. Will the clouds 
have Novella in a way. Well, cl will the cloud save Novell in a way that Linux has not yet done? The company certainly hopes so. Today, the company is kicking out its cloud manager tool, which has been under development for more than a year. Novell built itself a tidy little $2 billion business from networking x86 based servers in the 80s and 90s. But for a lot of complex reasons, Unix, Windows, and then Linux platforms came to dominate in data centers and closets cutting Novell in half and eventually compelling Novell to embrace Linux, which they did so by buying the German Linux maker Susie, or Susi, or however you want to say it, um, in 2003. Novell's network platform and related group-wise collaboration software has been in severe decline. I mean, it, it's been, back in the day, Novell was it. And now it's like, you're Novell shop still? What's wrong with you? You know, it, that's just how it works. Um, anyway, this cloud control tool, uh, it lets you do exactly what it says. If you've got a, a cloud cluster of Novell computers, you can control it with this tool, which is kind of neat. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all the details. Check it out if that's something you're interested in. From IT World, fact or fiction, top eight Linux myths debunked. That's right. There are a lot of Linux myths out there, including such things as it's hard to install. It's just for experts. The list goes on. This article attacks eight of the top ones. And again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. You need to go read the article. I'm not going to give it away because then the, the person who wrote this, Catherine Noyes, is going to be all upset at me because I <laughs> gave you no incentive to go read her article. Um, but... Um, very interesting read. By all means, go check it out. From Infotech, Tanner EDA releases Linux version of a full flow analog IC design suite. Tanner EDA dealing in the design, layout, and verification of analog and mixed signal integrated circuits has introduced a Linux version of the company's Hyper Silicon full flow design suite. Now, this is not that relevant to a lot of us, but still... Um, it's, it's big news because there's a lot of, you know, Linux is used for a lot of really technical computing type applications. And this is one more thing that is a technical, technical computing type application that is now released for, uh, the Linux platform. So this is big news. Again, um, go ahead and read this. If, if you're not into, you know, this type of thing, it's not really that relevant, but I thought I would mention it because there are listeners that, that, that actually do use these types of tools. From honline.com, Tiny Core Linux 3.1 released. Release the Kraken, the mini Kraken, that is. Tiny Core lead developer Robert, Robert Shingledecker has released version 3.1 of Tiny Core Linux. Wow. Now, tiny, yes. Tiny Core is a minimal distribution, minimal Linux distribution that weighs in at just over 11 megabytes in size. Oof. It has BusyBox, um, minimal graphics system based on TinyX and JWM. The core can run entirely in RAM. Oh, this is sick. It's got the 2.6.33.3 Linux kernel. You can load other software on there, but out of the box, tiny very tiny which is good from tmcnet.com narian says red hat may be acquired what fast money's john narian nahian not sure how you pronounce your last name sorry if i completely just flubbed it said there is speculation that red hat may be acquired and as a result its options and common stock are active. Shares of Red Hat are up more than 4%. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Now, the thing that I really take exception to about this is who's gonna acquire Red Hat? I mean, it says it may be acquired, that's great. By who? Be nice to know. From Computer World, will Google's Chrome OS be dead on arrival? Possibly. That's the short. <laughs> of 
course, that's always the short. The long Chrome-based no notebooks are still months away from release. Nobody knows exactly when they're going to be released. Nobody knows uh, people. Nobody knows whether or not people will want them. Um, Android tablets and Windows-based netbooks are likely to be available at the same price as Chrome note netbooks. Um, now, this article points out Preston Grala is the is the post is the poster of this blog post. He says that Stephen J. Von Nichols, really prolific, love reading his stuff. Uh, in his IT World blog, says that he doesn't expect Chrome-based notebooks to appear until the second quarter of 2011. The author agrees with him. So do I. I'm not expecting to see them anytime soon. The way Google does stuff, it's, you know, I, I, there's no expectation in the immediate future. It's going to be at least six months to a year, if not longer, before we actually see anything of that nature. Because they have to, A, finish it, B, get people to start loading it and selling it on hardware. So, again, it's six months to a year out, at least. By that time, Android tablets will likely have arrived in large numbers because Android's got a lot more steam uh, ahead of it than uh, Chrome OS. Plausible. And uh, there will probably be a wide a range of them and lots of niches and price points. So that's going to be competition. Um, Chrome's designed for life in the cloud, lots of web app goodness and all that other stuff. But if anything, Apple and their iPod Touch, iPhone, iPad has proven is that it's not in the web and it's not in the cloud. It's in the app. Their app store has more apps than you, you'd take you years to go through all those apps as a single person. A, B, it's all in the app. People, it's immensely popular and immensely successful. So, uh, and you, and the same thing with the Android App Store, you can expect to see the same thing there. It's going to be apps, 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 which leaves Chrome OS where? I mean, the, the, the author, Preston, makes a very valid point. It's like, what? Uh, it, for all we know, it's going to be DOA if it even shows up at this point. You know, Google may get far enough along and realize, oh, you know what? I mean, a lot of their decisions that they made seemed very forward-looking at the time, but that was almost a year ago. And since then, a lot has changed. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this all turns out. That's for sure. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Just visit us on the web at linux.quicksurf.com. Uh, you can subscribe. I have all the links to subscribe up there as well. So uh, feel free to head on over there and check it all out. You can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore bacon. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.